What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. We are here back at J-Town High School and, and we're just out here grinding uh, some, some coaches interviews and player profiles, man. And I appreciate you guys for coming on. But um, man, I, I don't know you personally, so, so could you just introduce yourself real quick? Uh, yeah, my name is Devin Mutadir. I'm the uh, co-offensive coordinator, O-line coach at Moore. My name is Russell Vay and I'm the uh, defensive coordinator at Moore High School. Okay, okay, and, and and we all have a past, man, and and, and, and we got people that 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 brought us along, man. Uh, do you guys have any mentors that you would want to shout out? I definitely have one, um, Coach Jim. Uh, he definitely pushed me a lot. Uh, Coach P. Perry, Coach Perry. Uh, he coaches at I think he coached at Atherton for a while. Uh, he was definitely one of my mentors. Kind of helped me get to college. Keep pushing me. Um, Mikael's definitely a mentor. Just seeing where he's at right now. Um, What's well, somewhere I want to be? So, I mean, and Gentry, Tim Gentry, for sure. That's definitely the biggest shout out right now. Yeah, no, I got to say, definitely uh, coaching with McKay last year. Um, he's definitely uh, been a mentor to me, uh, really kind of getting into this experience of being early coaches together and just kind of leaning on each other uh, for help, experience, lift each other up, encourage each other. Um, so, I definitely say, yeah, McKay. Okay, all right. And, and did you guys grow up in Kentucky? Uh, yes, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Yes, yeah, so also from Louisville, Kentucky. I actually played like Pop Warner football right out in front of Mayo. Or not Mayo, more, excuse me. Played at Mayo. Um, but yeah, from Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, okay. And, and like I said, what Little League team did you guys play for? I was a Hive U. I was a Hive U Mustang for sure. Yeah, same. Also, Hive U Oklahoma Mustang. Shout out Coach Billy. Okay. And, and did you guys have a certain, certain number that you guys wore? And did it have like a meaning to you? Yes. Uh, I could go through all of my numbers I had. 80. <laughs> uh, Eight was the year. I mean, eight was the number the day I was born. Uh, so I always stuck with eight. Kind of switched over to five. Five is my tra traditional favorite number. Uh, and while I was there, I kind of switched back from eighty to five. So those two was my. Those two was traditional to me, just because they are beneficial to what I have going on and some meaning behind why I wear that number. Uh, yeah, I wore a uh, number fifty-seven, and it was because uh, it was opposite my dad. My dad was seventy-five uh, when he played offensive line as well, all throughout his career. So I just wore the flip side of it, fifty-seven. Oh, there we go. And, and, and what what got you guys into coaching? Go ahead, coach. You got it. Yeah. Um. So I actually like I teach it more as well. We're a middle and a high school combined. I teach on the middle school side. And uh, an email came out from McKay saying he needed some help, and I really wanted to get into coaching, get back into the game. I hadn't played in a while. I didn't play in college like Russ. Um, so I wanted to get back into it. thought middle school was like a good stepping stone. Coached with him last year. We were very, had a very successful season, went to the 18 uh, playoff for the city um, for the first time, I think, in the middle school's like career at, at Moore. Um, and then when he got the high school job, I, I think he called me first and asked me to come up with him and, and stick with him and, and kind of be, like I said, that rock we've been for each other. And so that's what I did, and, and I've been loving it. Uh, my story's a little bit different. I kind of went to I went to college, graduated from Moore. I went to Eastern Michigan University, played free safety, strong safety, uh, a little bit of Jack as well. Uh, we kind of – it was just kind of traditional. I fell into coaching after my coach passed. He was a, a strong mentor to me. And he molded me into the man that I am that today while I was in college. Coach Reed, um, definitely a strong man. Um, and he kind of pushed me to it. I didn't really, I fell short of my dream going to the NFL. So I felt like being given back, coming back, trying to help other kids make their dream coming true was the best thing for me. So I think helping kids get to college was the reason I wanted to get there so they can get closer to their dream. Okay, nice, man. I love those answers, man. You guys are, you guys are throwing back, man, and sure. just, just reaching deep, man. <laughs> okay, and, and, and like you, you, you've played college ball. Yes, you've right. been in this coaching business, man. You know what I mean? It, it's stressful, but you put on the stress of yourself. You, you, as a player, you put yeah. stress on yourself. Definitely. Like, like how, did you guys, how did you deal personally with, with the stress of just ball? Man, um, I think the way I did it was more so of a, a support system. My mom, my dad, my brother, my younger brother, he plays Thomas Moore. He plays at Thomas Moore, he's the quarterback right now. So okay. I kind of just used them as a backbone to kind of just talk to them throughout my situations, what I was going through, and found other ways to cope, playing video games, just being alone in my, being alone in my own space. I value my time, and I value the things that I do. So I'd rather not put anything in jeopardy with doing something stupid. So that was just kind of the way I cope. Nice. Yeah, I definitely think I look at it a, like a teaching point of view, uh, just like football and just like learning. Everything's a process. 
Um, you know, you're going to have those ups, those downs. Um, and then also I, I told my wife my New Year's resolution was I wasn't going to let like bad practice days or game days affect me as much as I did last year. So for <laughs> sure that definitely going to be hard to do that for sure. Yeah. And, and and as a staff, man, I've seen you guys. I, I feel like you guys, you know what I mean, me as the outside looking in. You know what I mean? You guys were over there, and you guys were communicating, man. And that and that's like the whole big thing uh, of a coaching staff is to have, you know what I mean, that open forum. You guys can talk, man, because that, that's huge. Um, how do you guys feel about your staff, man? Yeah, I know. I mean, um, like I said, being co coaching with McKay for a year, I kind of already came in knowing – that we were going to hold these guys, these players, to a high expectation to try to get more back to where it's been in the past, uh, to playing at a high level. And with that, I think you need to co hold your coaching staff uh, to a high standard. Um, a leader shouldn't ask you know players to do anything that they wouldn't do. And so holding each other to a high uh, standard allows us to you know be able to lean on each other and trust each other and know that they're going to do their job at just like I'm going to do my job. He hit the hammer right on the nail, man. He's good. <laughs> He's a coaching way, man. He's waiting for the head coach, huh? I'm still learning. I'm trying to get to him. <laughs> okay. And, 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 like, it's we end of week four, man. You guys are out here just banging, man, just just having having a hell of a time. You know what I mean? Finally getting to hit somebody different, man. Yep. And uh, your progression for these last four weeks, man, how do you guys feel, you know, as your installs are going? How, how do you guys feel, man? I think it's going pretty good. Uh, as far as the defense right now, I think the guys are adapting to the change of what's going on. I think being out here is, is, is definitely helping them because they're understanding that there's a tempo that needs to be played. Yep. So, And a lot of the guys out here, some of the teams are tired. Some of them are not conditioned as well as they should be. But that's what this is for. It's, for the, it's, it's to help us see what our weaknesses are so we can strengthen those up by the time game time comes. Yes, sir. You good? No, yeah, I mean, I, I really think, uh, just being specific, uh, I think we really turned the corner at camp. Uh, camp was a very successful uh, week, and um, I'm really proud of what the guys, like I said, have turned that corner, but like he said, we still got things we got to sharpen up. There you go. And for you guys, man, how, how do you guys see the leaders of your team? And, 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 and are, who specifically do you, do you guys see leaders as, as this team, for this team? I'm shouting out one right now, Tino. Uh, Martin, he's a, he's a leader, man. We call him Tino, though. He's a leader. He, he does things. He's not servant, but he does things the right way. And he, he leads by example, if that makes sense. Uh, he does things the right way. He does what he needs to be asked. He's coachable. And he's able to try to help pick up other players. And he, he, he sets the tempo of the team. That's, that's my personal pick. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, I got, I got two probably. I would say uh, uh, one of our linebackers, Keon, he also plays tight end for us. He was a starting quarterback last year for the team, and when this new coaching staff took over, we decided to go in a different direction, and he's he's embraced that that challenge and that leadership to, to play another spot and still play at a high level and be positive and lift his brothers up, uh, as well as uh, one of our bigs, uh, Robert Tilford. Um, mm -hmm. He is that servant leader. Uh, if a guy is getting, you know, Having to do up downs for a punishment, he's going to do them with him. If a guy's kind of uh, slacking on the run, if if he's like a bigger guy and just isn't as in shape, he'll go and push him and run with him and things like that. So that's just two I wanted to shout out. That's amazing, man. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and personally, for you two, did do you guys have a, like a goal that you wanted this team to achieve? I think my goal for the defense is to get everybody playing at a high level playing fast, playing physical, being able to make plays, and being able to eliminate explosive. Those are those are my game day goals. So those are the things that I go by. Those are things that was taught to me when I played in college. Being able to play defense, you have to be able to make plays, play fast, play physical, and have fun. But also being able to know that this is a kid's game. So while you playing, have fun. Have fun. Yeah, I know. I definitely, you know, obviously to win games at the end of the day is, is what your goal is. But kind of like Russ was saying, I want these guys to be able to to look in the mirror after the season and be proud uh, of the player and the man that they've become um, and just really build the community around more. I want to see the stands get packed um, and really bring bring that atmosphere back that was here when, when Russ played, McKay, J.J. Weaver, who's now at Kentucky, those kind of that kind of community team. There we go, man. This has been a great podcast. I appreciate you guys sure, for, for just coming out and grinding. You know, I mean, you guys are busy as hell out here, man. Uh, but this has been a great, great, great podcast. Uh, like I always say, Everyone has a story, and I'm here for them to tell it. Cleats to Whistle Podcast.